Okay, so last time I introduced you guys the pi function and also the gamma function. So they are right here, right? And both of them can be used to extend the concept of factorial. And remember, when we have the usual factorial, we can only plug in past the whole numbers. So such as when n is equal to 1, 2, 3, the corresponding factorial value will be 1, 2, and 6. And the goal is to you know, make a continuous function connect the dots, right? And that's why we have these two functions. And the only difference between the pi function and then the gamma function is just the exponent here and here, right? So they are really similar. But anyway, this is what I want to show you. First of all, we know that just like last time, I told you when we have n factorial, this is exactly just pi of n, okay? This is really nice. So I can use the pi function to extend the concept of factorial to like a fraction number, right? Well, if you want to use the gamma function for the gamma function fans out there, n factorial is the same as gamma of, be careful with this, what's the input here? It's technically n plus 1. Why? Because you have to plug in n plus 1 into this x here. n plus 1 minus 1 is just n for the power, and that will be the same as the pi function, right? So n factorial is the same as gamma of n plus 1. So all of this right here are equivalent, of course. But anyway, let me show you how we can calculate half factorial in this case. Last time, we only saw 1, 2, 3 factorials like this. And also, I'll show you guys a 0 factorial, which is also equal to 1, right? But I would like to know what happens if n is equal to 1 half right here. When we connect the dots with a smooth curve, you know, we should have a value for the half factorial by using one of these, right? So anyway, let's do the following. I will calculate half factorial, and I can just simply plug in one half into this right here. Notice that I cannot say half factorial is one half times one half minus one times dot dot dot, right? I have to use this uh, integral definition for the n factorial. Anyway, let's go ahead and get going. This is the integral from zero to infinity, and well, actually, I should show you half factorial is just pi of 1 half. Or if you would like, you can say that's gamma of 1 half plus 1, which is the same as 3 half, all right? But I will just look at the pi function version. Anyway, integral from 0 to infinity, t to the half power, and then we have e to the negative t dt, like this. Now the question is, how in the world can we integrate this guy? Previously, we used integration by parts. This time, hmm, this right here is really bothering us, t to the 1 half. So let me actually proceed by doing the substitution first, okay? And I will just say that u equal to t to the 1 half power. So of course, I can square both sides and say, t is equal to u squared, all right? And notice that this integral originally is going from t from 0 to t equal to infinity. Now, once I bring this to the t world, you will see that this, I mean, the u world, when you plug in t 0 into here, we get 0 squared for the u, so u will be going from 0. And when we plug in infinity into this t, u is equal to infinity uh, to the 1 half power, u will also be infinity, right? And this right here, t to the 1 half power is just u, and e to the negative t, it will be e to the negative u squared, all right, like this. And dt, of course, we can just differentiate this both sides, dt will be 2u du, so I can put this right here, 2u du, right, 2u du, like that. So far, so good, yeah? And now we can clean things up, and we'll finish everything in the real world, because this right here will be just a number at the end for the final answer, right? So let me put a 2 all the way to the front, and then we have the integral. u goes from 0 to infinity, and then u times u is, of course, u squared, and now we have the e to the negative u squared, du, like that. Okay, so I don't know if I just make the integral worse or better. But let's see. Huh, maybe I still need to use integration with parts. Don't I? Hmm. Well, uh, in order for me to use integration by parts, 
Remember, I just have to pick up something that I know how to integrate. If you look at this integral right here, I seriously have no idea how to integrate u squared times e to the negative u squared. But I do know if I don't have the square right here, I can integrate u times e to the negative u squared, right? And of course, I can just uh, you know, put them aside. I can integrate this part pretty much, right? So with that being said, let me just look at the u squared as u times u, right? So I'll put on the u in red and then another u in black. I will integrate this part and I will differentiate this part and hope for the best. <laughs> so let's put that down in action. The d and the i, I will differentiate this u in red, okay? And then I will integrate this u to the, I mean u times e to the negative u squared in black. And of course, don't forget the plus minus. I will just proceed one time, differentiate this one time as just u, uh, 1, right? And now let's do this in our head. When we integrate this, I have to do a substitution that w equals to negative u squared, all right? And you know the derivative of this is negative 2u, and I will have to, you know, at the end, divide by uh, negative 2, and then you can solve out. But anyway, you get negative 1 half, e to the negative u squared, like this. And now we'll proceed. And remember, the product of the diagonals is the first part of the answer already, okay? So let's go ahead and put this down here. So this is equal to, and don't forget, we still have this two all the way in the front. So let's go ahead and put that down first. Open the parentheses. Now, this times this is the first part of the answer from this integral, right? I will just write down negative u over two, okay? And then we have this e to the negative u squared, right? And then in the parentheses, we also have to multiply this row. And remember, the product of each row is still an integral. This is negative 1 times negative 1 half of this, so it's becoming a positive integral. And we will just have the 1 half, and we have the e to the negative u squared, du, okay? So it's just like this. And of course, originally, this integral was going from 0 to infinity. So for this part, which is the first part of the answer, right? So we have to evaluate this from 0 to infinity. And this is still the integral that goes from 0 to infinity. And now, we have this 2 in the front. So if you would like, distribute, distribute. So you see, this 2 and that 2 cancel nicely. So I will just write this down first. Namely, I get negative u, e to the negative u squared and this is still going from 0 to infinity. And then this 2 and that 1 half also cancels out. So plus integral from 0 to infinity, I will just have this part, e to the negative u squared du, like this. And now, we don't have to integrate this anymore. This is, you just plug infinity to see what's up with this, right? So it's similar to what we did previously. We will have to use Laputal's rule because we have to technically take the limits, right? Therefore, let's go ahead and take the limit as u goes to infinity. And I will put down negative u on the top, and I'll bring this down to the denominator. So it's e to the positive u squared. If you have negative infinity over infinity, you know the button is much bigger, but I will still have to show you guys with the L'Hopital's rule. Let's go ahead and do ddu, right? ddu. So on the top, you see this is L'Hopital's rule in action. This is the limit as u goes to infinity, on the top is negative 1, on the bottom, you end up with 2u e to the u squared, and seriously, you end up with 0 at the end. So, the first part is, when you plug infinity here, you get this 0 in blue, right? And then, of course, you have to minus, you have to plug in 0 into this right here, and thanks to this u, this is also going to be 0, right? So, the first part of, of that is just 0. And now we just have to take care of this. We add the integral from 0 to infinity, e to the negative u squared, du. And now, what is this? In fact, this is a really, really famous integral. And if you want to know more about this, you can watch the videos. I will have the links to those videos in the description for you guys. This is called the Gaussian integral, right? Half of it actually, because the Gaussian, the famous one, is actually going from negative infinity to positive infinity. This is only going from zero to infinity, so it's half of it. 
I will just write this down right here. I will put it down as a note, which it says the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of the integral right here, e to the negative, and I'll just use x. Negative x squared like this, dx. All in all, we get square root of pi. And because the integral right here is an even function, and when you go just halfway from 0 to infinity, this right here, you just get half of this value. So in the end, we see that 1 half factorial is equal to this value, namely square root of pi, and then divided by 2. And this right here is super, super cool, thanks to the pi function or the gamma function, depends on which one that you like more, right? So hopefully you guys like this video, and if you're new to my channel, please subscribe. And thank you guys so much. As always, that's it.